Teaching Toby is presented by Master Channel. Instantly produce outstanding masters at masterchannel.ai. Use the code METOBI during checkout for 50% off. Nice! What am I doing in this cabin with Matoma teaching me music production? Well, I'm Toby and I'm part of a DJ duo with my girlfriend. But producing music? Oof, that's hard. Nice! Oh! <laughs> that was a good intro track. <laughs> Welcome to episode uh, 3 or uh, 4 or where we are. I don't know where we are because the most important thing when you are making music is having fun. That's true, that's true. Yeah, so cheers to that. Cheers to that. You, you got some homework. I had some homework, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I've been seeing you work. Yeah, I've been working. Yeah, this is no joke, I've been working all day. Yeah. While he had uh, sessions over uh, Zoom and stuff, I've been sitting over there on the couch, just uh, I had some trying to understand uh, the homework. <laughs> After my meetings, I, I went over there with some pancakes and I, I asked him, like, how is it going? And he said to me, I, I really don't understand this B minor key because it's really boring. I'm, 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 I'm trying to figure out how I can make some cool melodies on three notes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so basically, Toby thought that B minor, like playing in B, like the key of B minor, he thought that uh, that uh, it was playing in the B minor chord. Yeah, I, 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 I thought so because that's what we talked about. No, we talked about the different keys. Yeah, and the scale, and that's what I figured out uh, at the end. So I was trying to make a bass line with just having three notes or keys or what do you call it. Yeah, three notes. Yeah, three <laughs> notes, and uh, it was impossible. So uh, when I told Tom that, I was like, hey, how do you do it? How do you make a cool bass line with three notes? And he was like, three notes? What are you talking about? You have a whole, you have a whole scale in B minor. And then I googled it and then I saw the whole scale I could um, have fun in. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's a lesson uh, for you so guys as well, or so definitely for me. I created a new drum pattern yeah. or uh, rhythm. Uh, I've, um, I've uh, done some automation. Automa automation? Automation, yeah. I've uh, added some reverb on the automation and some claps and some... So you've added reverb auto auto automation on the claps? If you see here, I... Um oh wow, look at you! Yeah, 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 yeah. You've been like, uh, you've been really rocking. So uh, I figure out the whole automation system. I can tell that you're, you have a very stru structured mind because this is very... <laughs> That's very structured. No, I just copy pasted it. So you, so you didn't do like in real time? I did it first in real time. Yeah. And uh, you were then it sounded shit. Oh, okay. So, so, uh, so your, your mind selectively uh, made the decision that it was better for you to, to copy paste it. Yeah. Yeah, no, but that's good. Yeah. Because, because then you have done a creative, uh, you, you have done a creative process, but you're also processed it, you know? Yeah. Let's have a listen. Yeah. Uh, but th then I just want to say that I, I <laughs> now had the, I only play the bass line you're using those three um, yeah. notes. So I, I would actually, so, I, so I want to go in and, and maybe, you know, Ch change, change the bass, li bass line. Yeah, make a it a little bit more uh, diverse. Until tomorrow. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. Let's, okay. Let's listen. Oh, very dark. Ooh, Toby Tobes. Ooh, what you talking about? You don't need to change like that. That's fucking it's sick. Amazing work, Toby Tobes. Seriously? Yeah, this is great. Thank you, but wow. it was it was hard using those three notes because it I, I went to a little bit uh, a little bit of a, a Fisher but, but trap, you know yeah, what I mean? No, but you know, you know, like I think those three notes limited you. 
but it also gave you boundaries. Yeah, but uh, it's you know, so 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 you you only thought that you had you only thought seriously that you had three notes to use. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. You made, so you made the best out of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so here I I automated automated so it uh, had a little bit um, reverb on the end, which was a nice little trick you taught me. Uh, I added a little reverb on the clap at the end and I bypassed it. Uh, that means I um, turned it off after uh, it was uh, done before the next uh, clap. That was a very weird way to uh, explain it. Uh, but it sounds something like this and I think it sounded cool. With the bass line, I had the, the basic bass line, the three, the iconic three um, notes uh, bass line. Yeah. Uh, I stacked it um, here. I stacked it uh, with a little bit of um, so bright bass on, on top. I found I made all the I made all the percussions in Logic except this one I found on Splice, which I just uh, transposed. Yeah, transpose. No, I didn't transpose it. It was in uh, B minor actually. I found it on Splice, so it worked. Uh, it worked uh, good. And then I just found some uh, basic uh, risers and cymbals and uh, a girl voice on Splice, which I thought was kind of. <laughs> Little freaky, sexy, weird shit, but you know who doesn't like freaky sexiness? I I like freaky sexiness. I think um, what you've done, like uh, some of the sounds here, you haven't um, you haven't named. No, I should do that. Yeah, and also put them in different folders. The thing that that hit me yeah. when I listened to it was you're you're missing a sub bass. Yeah, like and a deeper bass? A deeper bass. So basically what you're having right now, you're having a bass that is quite heavy in the in the 100 hertz to 3 or 400 hertz. Yeah. But but you don't have like a sub bass that gives you the oomph yeah. that we were talking about I agree. In, in, in the club. So, and I, I also see that you've um, uh, systemized, systemized your, your project, like you've You've structured it like with, with all your drums in in one section, then you go down in the bass line here, yeah. then you have the effects. Um, so that's really cool. Structure is a good key to for efficiency. Yeah. Because then you can just like, for example, I haven't done it here because uh, I was limited on time before my, my, my voice meeting, but um, I started with the drums here and the effects. And I kind of like to, to, to do it that way. Yeah. And then I, I maybe go to add the folder, ba base, bases or base or, and then I add the bases here. So I have two bases. Yeah, it was so much easier to uh, navigate then through out the, no, through in the door uh, when it was uh, organized. I like to be creative, but I also like to have some system in it because then if I if if in a project I can suddenly have two hundred tracks, yeah, and then if I have two hundred tracks and there's no system in it, it go, it's it's going to take me forever to find the sound I'm looking for. Let's have a listen to what I've done. Yeah. I like it, it's a little bit freaky. It's yeah. like a little bit like, what's going on here? I would probably build some more tension towards the end there because that's that's 
that's pretty much my intro and my, my verse. And then I'm gonna go into like a pre-chorus with some chords and some like just down break. Yeah. And then build up towards a chorus. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about some layering. I heard in your track that you were missing some sub. Yeah, because it sounds. Uh, I'm not happy with it. Uh, it's 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 it doesn't sound as as um, thick as thick. Yeah. Should I worry about that now, or should I just continue with the track and then I can always go back and and you know add more sounds? It depends because if if you're in a creative zone where the the, the track is taking you somewhere, yeah. like um, inspirationally, and you you have oh I have this sick melody I want to record. Yeah. For example, if 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 I did if if I wasn't as technical and and I I couldn't put in like a sub frequency bass in yeah. two minutes and I knew how to make it tight and it would take me like an hour and that would make my creative process um, be interrupted. Yeah. Then I think, for example, just like the the, the synth I have here. If if I if I were to come up with some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if then that it changes the whole track. If, if, if that was my melody and I, I was to focus that, yeah. then I would rather work on that yeah. and then worry about the frequencies later and, and about like the, the layering on the different... Yeah. Because getting the idea down is the most important thing. If I were at home right now yeah. and I would make this, yeah. uh, I would maybe throw it away and start on scratch, you know, if I wasn't 100% like, ah, oh, this is not the sound I was maybe going for. I uh, maybe just uh, I'll start from scratch. I think there's a lot of, I think it's, I think it's not just me, but it's a lot of people out there who has um, half done projects in their folders. You know what I mean? In in my career over the years, like you know this, like I can I can make a demo in a day, but does that demo end up being a released song, like? In a year, how many demos do you think I make? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, uh, probably like know, around really. 200. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Maybe, maybe even more. And then. But I'm talking more of a more of a because you're on another level. I'm talking more of a that you have a groove going, you have a melody and then you, you know, you abandon it and then start on a new project. I think a lot of but, but a lot of people do that and me, me included. But yeah. then you have learned something from the project, you know? Yeah, but, it's, but how important is it to finish a whole track? You know? Not finish it, from, but have it like, uh, okay, I made more than 16 bars. I think, I, I think like, if the, if, if, if the creativity stops you, you know? If, if you end up being tired from the track, yeah. which can happen, um, th there's no... That there's no point of you working on it, but I also think that a quitter is is kind of like okay. Then why are you doing it? Yeah, finish what you started. Yeah, like because because this like give it give, like then you yeah okay then just pause the project, uh, leave it for for a day or two, uh, close it, but but but. Um, Write down a note, just like write down some, okay, I, I like this about the track, I like, okay, I, I, I like the bass line, but I, can, I could probably make a better bass line. Um, I like, um, I like the, the, the chord progression, I like the structure around the chords. Yeah. Um, there's, mi there's something missing in the track, maybe, maybe I need to listen to some songs, like just write yourself like a couple, like five or six notes. Yeah, because um, now now the bass line, my bass line, uh, uh, is too dark and it's too monotone for my taste. You know, yeah. so so that's why I'm 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 asking you: Should I d just then continue and maybe you know change up the bass line a little bit, like later in that scale, like uh, have a different options there? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. That's what we're gonna dive, uh, dive into now. Yeah, no. I, Where I'm do we take it from here? I, to be honest, I think I think the, the the structure we have right now is a good 
is a good structure for a um, for a new project. You yeah. know, the, the if you're not happy with the baseline, then you ju just take it out and, and and make a new one. Yeah. But as you said, like uh, you've been sitting with this for five hours and and really digging in on the baseline. Yeah, and I was I was vibing. I yeah, was you, fun. you, yeah, you, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I could tell. But then you have discovered, like, okay, I learned something new because I was just playing three three notes. Yeah. Because I thought the chord of, like the, the 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 basic chord of B minor, was the key of B minor, yeah. which is two different things. Yeah. So now you have a new you have a new specter to yeah. look at, and I also think that. After episode three here, you're gonna understand the the value of layering a base. Yeah. Because for you, does this sound more fuller? This sounds a lot more because fuller. Because this is like, it's not as, when you look at the two projects right here, there's not, there's not, there's not much more going on in my project compared to yours. Yeah. There's just a couple effects and then I layered the baseline. Yeah. And I've added a couple since. Yeah. But I've been selective in the process of doing that because I've I know the vision and I also know where to take it. Yeah. So yeah, and, but and that, that comes with but that comes with time. That comes with time. It yeah. takes like I started producing when I was 16. Like you can't just think that overnight you're going to be like cracking codes and like uh, uh, sitting in C sound and, and programming your own synths and, and making plugins and like that, that takes time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you uh, put up your kick? Yeah. Can you, can you just uh, play it with the bass? Can you transpose the kick down um, a whole a full note? That's and two semitones. Yeah, exactly. Even one more. Ooh. And there's that 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 click thing in the, in. The, in the if you solo the kick it's like this super frequency click if you have an eq this. oh you even mm, yeah. it. oh yeah, that's, okay that's cool i kind of want you to to take out the high frequencies of the kick yeah. and then find a better top kick. I feel like this kick doesn't complement the track. You know? Yeah. You, on every sound you're you're choosing, you have to be selective. Yeah. And and I, like uh, with my with my hearing, I, I I feel like it's it's too clicky yeah. instead of being too giving that Amphi, uh, mid-range, good punch. Yeah. Should we make a kick? So here I've um, uh, I've found three kicks just by using splice. Yeah. And I've layered them and I've taken out the frequencies on each and every single kick okay. to make them sound. Um, tight and good with each other. Okay. And the result is... So here I just found a kick where I, where I isolated. Is it, t is it three different uh, kicks? Three different kicks. Oh wow. Yeah. So here I just found basically like a kick where I, where I isolated like the lower frequencies from around 350 hertz and I took out everything else. Yeah. Yeah. So that leaves me with the... 
the lower frequencies in mm. the kick because I, I didn't like how it sounded in the, in the top top frequencies it was quite for my taste this was too bright too bright and too too clicky but I like the the, 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 the sub, sub frequencies and how tight it was in the sub the tail on this was was uh, three bars in the beat no three beats in the bar yeah yeah and and I, I, I trimmed it took away the tail and then I auto automated the, the volume so it's a bit shorter but still punchy and then I found a, a kick where I like the mid frequencies a lot I just took took away the boominess by EQing it, like cutting the lower frequencies to around like 165 hertz, and then I EQed some more to 150 on just like a, a waves EQ4. Do you do this to isolate the, the frequencies, or or to enhance it? Isolate some frequencies, but also enhance the, the frequencies that I like. Okay. So here, for example, I listened to it. I used my, my tool. I went, I dragged up the dB. And I found... So you like this one, this sound? Yeah. Yeah. And here, okay, I like how it sounds around 330 hertz. Yeah. So let's drag up the dB here to like 4 dB. And then I, there's not much information in the top frequencies here, so I just let it be. I, I just let it be. I could like if 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 it if there was noises or like um, yeah, you would take that down. Yeah, if there was information yeah. in the top frequencies that I didn't like, I could just basically put on a low pass filter and and take it away. Yeah. So, but you hear there's yeah. So now I have a sub kick. A, a mid kick and a top kick. Yeah. And and the top kick sounds something like this. And here I basically just took away like the 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 very very low amount of like sub frequencies in the kick. Yeah. Because I, there's no point of me having it. So and combined with these th three kicks it sounds Sounds like a Swedish house mafia kick. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll try that to, until next time. Yeah. I would like if I like this kick, I'm I'm just gonna leave the three kicks. Just call them sub kick, middle kick, high kick. But what I could do, I could also render them down to. Uh, just one track. Yeah. If if I'm happy with my kick, but I'm I'm just gonna leave them here. That's good for uh, that's probably good for my computer, which is not that fast. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. I'm I'm gonna I'm I'm actually so happy with this kick, so I'm gonna take out the previous one and just keep this one in. But when you're on Splice, you you listen for kicks that uh, you listen for three different kinds of kicks: the one that has a good sub, the one that have a good high and a good mid. Yeah, nice. and then I isolate. I, I yeah. find uh, I find where I should um, have uh, either like a low pass filter or a high pass filter. I find the frequencies that I like and I enhance them. Yeah. Okay, so we have quite a similar arrangement. Here comes the big question, where do we take it from here? Uh, like it goes down, we create maybe some melody, is yeah. it synths, um, what's your process there? So, so for me the process right now is like we have a really, we have a really great uh, structure for an intro, for a verse and it, it builds quite nicely. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, there where I'm feeling super enthusiastic going into the pre yeah. uh, or like a down uh, like a down drop yeah. like a, a down section where like everything is just like you make some impact noises and you 
you you you introduce the listener to like some new elements like maybe like a chord structure on like some synths or or something new uh, completely different from, from what you've heard yeah that depends on the genre it depends on the on the on this uh, like where you want to take the song yeah so uh, i'm i'm f uh, here i'm i'm feeling i'm very inspired by faithless on this track it it kind of reminds me of like the the, the the great faithless era yeah so I, i'm probably gonna mess around with some synthesizers and try to make like a cool cool like uh, synth melody yeah and then build towards like a drop and then the drop is probably gonna be more bass heavy and 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 more monotone but like have some drive and some uniqueness to it that yeah. makes the listener just be like wow shit what was that okay so so i i think like a like a like a pre-chorus and then build the pre-chorus into a chorus. I what you do right now is you, you, you go into your notes yeah. and then you write down the stuff that you're not happy with because now you're moving into a, a, a build down. Yeah. Uh, and or the, or the pre-chorus. So now you're moving away from this section. Yeah. So it's important for you because you've been working uh, constantly on this for five six hours yeah you 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 know what you're not happy with so write down it in notes okay exactly would you create a new melody line here yeah yeah I would I would probably keep the I would probably keep the synth that I introduced in the last section of the eight bars yeah this one because this one is very unique yeah because it sticks out can so. i see can i see what you would do now forward yeah so i would most likely just um, quickly found like a impact Oh, that sound I like. Oh shit, that was crazy. I felt like I was in a Michael Bay movie there for a second. Wah -bah. Wah -bah. Armageddon. That's what we want to feel on the dance floor. Oh. Sick. That's, that's how you get the festival crowd going. And uh, now I will probably add a, a pad here. Might you go Synth right now is VPS Avenger. I really love that synth. It was actually actually Sigala in a session that introduced it to me. He he gave me some tips and advices, and he said like this synth I've been using for a couple of years, and I it 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 looked similar to to Nexus, but I feel the the the, the library and also the sounds are are more refreshing yeah it's quite expensive but um, i think the i think the plugin is around 220 dollars and and it, it might be too expensive for um, a, a bedroom producer or s somebody that is like yeah but i don't think it's too expensive if you have like one plugin the, the problem with plugins for me is that you know you, you buy so many plugins and that equals so much money. You know, if you yeah. buy one plugin to $200, another one to 50, 100, 75, 30, 30, 30. That's why I think it's important that you, that you do the trial of the plugins, like a demo trial yeah. for 30 days and then you try them out and then you figure out quickly, like, what am I comfortable with? Because a lot of producers, they like, they like tweaking their own sounds, then maybe silent, massive like uh, you have a serum reactor you could use like um, absinthe should i buy different kinds of plugins so instead of buying two three synth plugins i should find one synth that i like and then maybe some uh, fx plugins and fab filter and a reverb plugin you know so i get the basics instead of buying 
three cents. You know what I mean? Yeah. To be honest, I think like um, I think I've spent I spent a lot of money on on swings, but I'm in a place where. Yeah, but when you started out, you didn't do that. No, I did. Oh, you, okay. <laughs> so, so I, 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 all my savings went to plugins and to 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 studio equipment and to speakers and to. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so I was quite committed. For example, with 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 the package from Native Instruments, you get like a, a, a library of almost two terabytes if you buy Native Instruments complete. For example. Yeah. And it's affordable. It's 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 like a thousand dollars or like fifteen hundred dollars and you get like this like endless possibilities with like sounds yeah but that's an investment thousand dollars then you you know you're it's yeah, no way out then you have to no but i feel like if 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 if, if you want to take your music to the next step you need to be committed yeah. you need to believe in yourself like if 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 you don't believe in yourself what's the point yeah yeah, yeah that's true so but, but you can also create a track without plugins a, yeah, a good but, track. But then you're competing against people that that most likely have them and know how to use them. Uh, I would say like choose your plugins wi- wisely in the terms of where you want to use them. As an example, let's load up contact. That's that's a good good starting point. Here I have a sampler a sampler li- library with a, I've bought a couple different packs. Analog Brass and Winds, Hybrid Keys, Reverb, Vocals, Exhale, which is like vocal based um, effects, a piano, strings, West Africa, um, drum loops, vin- vintage organs. There's a lot of different things here. And for you that just started producing, this might be too much for you, you know? Yeah, I agree. That's what I, I totally agree. So, so instead, maybe you should find like, a, um, say for example, Roland has like a, a Roland Cloud, which is great because then you pay, you pay like ten dollars a month, and 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 paying upfront fifteen hundred dollars for somebody is is a lot of money. But maybe they can afford paying ten or fifteen dollars per month. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So having having that ex- as an example, and you can you can use the Juno 60 and fully learn how to use this amazing synth, which has transformed the music scene since the 80s. Yeah, and for ten dollars, you can see if that's something for me or for you. Yeah, uh, and then if it's not, then you can just cancel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's genius. It. Move on, and 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 that's a good money machine as well. And, uh, Good b- b- okay, so let, let's then say I have a, a Roland Cloud. I'm paying them fifteen dollars a month, and my m- now I want to create a pad. So within this Juno 60, you can either choose the 60 with the high pass uh, filter, and and that's pretty much like how the how the warmth in the synth process the sounds so they have the 60 and they have the legendary 160 oh legendary goosebumps Goosebumps. oh (laughs) then say for example this uh, classic pad you can hear that it's legendary that's so I think the attack and the sustain and the release needs to be dragged down because it's I don't I don't like what's happening right there. So let's drag down the sustain, release and attack. So the attack is the is how quick the the key is hit, like the the, the sa- like the yeah. waveform is kicking in when you hit the the, the, the key. Yeah. So if I have a longer attack it's gonna take longer for the for the envelope to evolve. So yeah. And then if it's shorter, yeah. Did that make sense? Yeah, yeah. The sustain is basically how long it's gonna sustain. In the, like how long it's gonna take for the for the 
envelope waveform to to stop okay yeah so drag that down and the same with the release it, it just uh, uh, use like a filter to to make it like more oh that's cool toby tobes mm. i need to trans transport it up to to the key we're playing in because we choose to play in c minor but then we i decided to go up to to e Mm. which was the original key of the sample we used in the bass line. But I've limited myself to just play in C minor because that's the chord I can play. Yeah. If I was a, a producer, which like, you know? Yeah. So then I tra have transposed the, the, my, my synth up to four. So I can still play it in C minor, but it's in E minor. Yeah. So. I'm hearing here, I, I, I kind of want some more release and some more sustain. Okay, cool. So now we are getting to the point of like, which type of chords do we want? Yeah. Starts on, on on the on the on this key, the main note of the E minor chord. Yeah, and that's the E. I had it on my tongue. You did? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> okay, cool. So That was some tension there. Yeah. And then you could like. Have fun with it and, and check out and see what was that? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a hybrid form of doing it because right now it's this could be a deep house track, it could be like a EDM track, like Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, this I'm, could be everything, anything. Yeah, I'm, but I'm, um, I'm just trying to 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 show people that that in in the downbreak or the or the pre-chorus that like add some new texture and some new flavors and and build it towards like a, a chorus and if 
if you are having a hard time because right now I, I, I went from something simple with the bass line just playing like that. Yeah. With the with the with the yeah, because that's what my question. Yeah. I don't know any chords, you know. How do so, I, how do I? So what you can do there is, you can go on Google. You can write D minor key B minor chords, and then piano. How to play B minor chord. Pianokeyboardguide.com. That's the B minor chord. And you thought this was the B minor key. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna hear that for a couple of days. I yeah, think. you are. <laughs> so this gives you the basic insights of B minor. Since you were in B minor, I, I'm I'm playing in E, but it's the same principle. B minor. This is a C minor. Yeah. And it's it, it's the same concept. So you have the you have the first chord. First. But, but you still this is a lot of theory, you know? So I would still is this all, you know, there's endless not endless, but there's many chords you can do within the B minor scale. Yeah, and that's that's where my that's where my second point is 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 coming. I I, I think in the long term it will benefit you to learn basic chord structures. Yeah. It, if you invest in that, it's like investing in stocks, like you or like uh, funds. Yeah. You don't see the result immediately, but over time the investment will grow. Yeah. The more time you invest in learning new things, the 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 the, the more capable you are of uh, musical freedom. Yeah. Of inspirational freedom because then you know can okay I know the different chords of like and you don't again if you find it different oh B minor that's a that's a hell of a chord that's a hell of a chord to learn yeah. because you have black keys and you have white keys yeah. and like it's just keys all over the place yeah. it might be easier for you to play in C ma major yeah. which is just like white keys yeah why did I pick B minor? <laughs> okay, you can, you can always change. But there's also plugins for this, isn't it? Like uh, yeah, chord you, plugins. Chord plugins. You have you have like you can you can. But again, your budget. Yeah. Like, f Google is free. Yeah. And you can find information on YouTube and also on 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 Google. So if if you're limited on your resources when it comes to your wallet, I would say that. You're just taking a shortcut by, by not learning. Yeah, of course. Yeah, learning yeah. it in the proper way. But that would be like now for me realistically, if I would to finish a track, I would need to either, either try to learn some basic chords or yeah. go to splice and find like a media I could maybe change a little bit up, or. Um, or just so, simple it so, down. So what 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 you can or do, find a plugin or find the plugin. Yeah, exactly. But what you can do is like learning the key of C major, which is the simplest key to play in yeah. on the piano. It's C D E F G A B C. Yeah. And when you have learned that, and you have learned uh, simple chord production uh, chord progressions with like C E G. That's the basic chord of C. So C, E, G makes the basic chord of a C major chord. Yeah. On steps, that's just one full note. So between the different steps. So it's D between C and E and F be between E and G. Yeah. And it's the same with, it's the same with, with a B. Yeah. But but. And it's the same with an A. It's the same with a G. Yeah. F. 
E, D, yeah. C. But this, uh, we're not gonna go deep into this because I've seen there's a lot of good YouTube tutorials out there yeah. which goes through the the scales so and, and the chords and everything. Yeah, but if, yeah. If, if you learn to play in the C major chord. Yeah, then I could... Um, no, if you learn to, to play in the C major key. Yeah. And then if you are ha making a song and all your samples and all your sounds are in E minor. Yeah. It's like you can play C major in an E minor project. Yeah. But you, what you can do is relevant in minor. The signature flat and no sharp is the relevant minor is an A minor. I think for now it's it's super good to know and and I would definitely uh, practice more piano basically practice the the scales and and not try to learn all the scales at no, once but 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 start with c major c major uh, and take it from there yeah, yeah that's and a then, good and a then good tip. and then when you when you learn the the scale of c major it's easy for you to to trans because within the within the program you can you can transpose it yeah so if you are playing in c major say for example okay so if I if I'm limited to only play C major, and I know that this track is in E minor, then I go to Google, a search relevant key of C major key in minor, and here you have it, example of relative keys C major and A minor. Yeah. Yeah. So if I'm playing the C major chord, yeah. and I want to play that in minor to get it to E minor. Yeah. The relevant chord of C major is E minor. A minor. No, uh, A minor, sorry. A minor. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So that means I need to transpose it down one, two, three, four semitones. Or five, sorry. Five semitones. So if let's just listen. You hear? Yeah. It's the same. And now you're playing the... Now I'm playing in C... Major. Major. Huh. Or A minor, which is the relevant. Yeah. Yeah. But, 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 but then you, you, you... Basically what you're saying is that you, you can get away if you only know, for example, C major. Yeah. And you have a MIDI keyboard and you change the MIDI files later. Yeah. Hmm. Just by transposing it. Yeah, yeah. Within the project. Yeah. So it's a, it's a really... I think a lot of producers they get scared of like jumping into the whole learning the keyboard because yeah, me because, included because they see the black keys and they see the white keys and they think like I'm I'm never gonna learn to play piano just like playing in C major on the white keys is is very simple and just learning simple but easy mm. uh, sheet. And uh, no, uh, like sh uh, sheet understanding yeah. by, by knowing like okay how do I play the different chords in a C major scale? Yeah. Then you can transpose it. Wow, this is a. And and just I'm by, mind blown. And just by Google, as long as you know the difference between minor and major, what we talked about. Yeah. So if you play in C C major, then the relevant key is A minor. That basically means like you're playing in the same chord, just you need to start on the A yeah. instead of the C. So this is a C, C yeah. major, this is an A minor chord. Mm. So if you're playing in a C major chord, but, but your, 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 your project is in F major, then you just need to transpose it one, two, three, four, five, six semitones up, yeah. and you're in uh, F major. But if you're playing then in E minor, uh, you just need to remember that 
the, the, the relevant of C major is the E minor in the, in the C major scale. Yeah. And then you need to transpose it in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So it's not rocket science. No. No. It's just music. Compliments. So here I would use that here I would use that synth and maybe I would just like have the have the clap. I feel like that synth, the, the lead synth I'm using, and it's the same synth that I'm using just because I, I quite like that synth because it sticks out and yeah. it sounds very, like there's something mystical about it. And yeah, yeah. And, this, and, the, and the structure and, the, and like the, the, the phrasing of it makes me, like my, my, my ears are like, oh, what's this? You know, mm. it's the, the palettes. If you have the right palettes, then your ear you're getting an ear eargasm. <laughs> and that's what we like in music. Okay, so. So just dragging up the reverb because I, I kind of like it to be spacey mm. when there's not too many elements going on in the, in the down break, like the pre-chorus. So. They're kind of... <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Ah, uh, producer uh, jokes. I'm, I'm, I'm usually quite picky when it comes to like melodies and, and recording them, so I'm... That's your, that's your favorite part. That's, 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 yeah. yeah, that's my favorite part. So I, I, I always record them until it's perfect. So I can just like slightly quantize them yeah. and quantize mean just like moving them in order in the project, so it's rhythmically correct. Yeah, it snaps to the grid. Yeah, snaps to the grid. That's a, that's a good way of saying it. So, but uh, so you 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 never change MIDI files, or you try to avoid it as much as possible. Maybe a baseline here or yeah, there if, yeah. if 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 I if I want to add like a yeah. like a back slap on the bass or like some something that makes the tension. Just move a little more, but uh, on, on the lead, no, no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's like that's this no is way. my. I don't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, I should have created um, a pad or something in that um... down break. Yeah, yeah. Um, you should you should um, just keep uh, like find as uh, a, a, a clap or something to just uh, be be on the every second bar on the yeah to just have that uh, have that um, rhythm going and and the drive yeah and then some some uh, effects and then you should also just try to make that pad and a simple lead yeah on top of the pad. On top of the pad. Oh, you're crazy, man. Okay, I'll try. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm the bird. And I'm Larry Bird. No, I'm, I'm the bird leaving the nest. I have oh, to fly. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Teaching Toby is presented by Master Channel. Instantly produce outstanding masters at masterchannel.ai. Use the code METOBY during checkout for 50% off.